They have won by six goals to nil. They're into the semi-finals once again. And the Blues will be the team that nobody wants to draw in the FA Cup semi-final. The other three quarter-finals take place tomorrow. And Harland, Harland now has his match ball. He'll dry it off. He'll maybe give it a bit of a hair drying. And he'll put it in his bed alongside him. And he'll sleep well tonight. The final score, City 6, Burnley 0. Well, let's go back to the studio where we can join Kel. Can you say that here? The Etihad is bouncing. That man has got another ball he can go to bed with tonight. <laughs> it has finished. Manchester City 6, Burnley nil at full time. And that does mean for the fans and the boys in blue, it's another trip to Wembley for the semi final. What a game from that man there as well, Kevin De Bruyne. Well, David, you were asking, you were, you were asking for six or seven goals. You yeah. got the six. I, I'm sorry, I got it wrong. I said five. <laughs> no, you said five. You <laughs> said, said, said at half time you wanted six or seven. They, they must have heard you. Um, <laughs> unbelievable. What? Uh, mm. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> Speechless. Because six nil. Um, uh, it could have been seven or eight. Oh yeah, keep him at some. There was there was a when the goals started coming in the second half. I mean, we we were talking about it. Here. It was like training session. You know, the skills Alvarez has got. <laughs> Kevin De Bruyne's ball for Alvarez's goal. I mean, it's just there, there were moments there where everything yeah. just was perfect. Yeah. And Burnley happened to be on the field. It was almost like they, they could have done this without anyone on the field. It was su super. Jolene, we were talking about in the, in the first half, you know, the two goals came after a kind of very, you know, cagey almost 30 minutes. What changed in the second half for City to, to come out the blocks and, and do what they did in the second half there with scoring four goals? Quality, fatigue on the Burnley perspective. Again, you can... They probably never would have had to concentrate to a level of that to stay in a game. Like, if that level of concentration is normal for Burnley, then it's because they want to create two, three chances and go up where... To, to be 2 0 down and have to be at your utmost best to get anything out of the game and still not be good enough. It's a new experience. So we've seen City do that to so many teams. They did it in the Champions League quarterfinals or semi final knockout stages in the midweek. So yeah. it shouldn't come as a surprise um, overall, but remarkable goals. Remarkable. We'll get to the goals in just a second, Sean, but we, we can't not speak about the big man up front. That's two hat-tricks in five days, and that's 42 goals for the season. Really still a quarter of the season to go. I mean, I, I think we've run out of superlatives to, to talk about him, haven't we? Yeah, we were all speaking about it. It's like, what can he get to? When does it stop? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like if, when does it stop? <laughs> yeah, does it end? If, if, never, if, never. Because if we keep giving him chances like that, the chances are you would say, 50 to 75 percent of them, he's gonna put in the back of the net, and he's always gonna get chances, especially when he's, Phil's he's, on. It's higher than that, that, though, Sean. It's not like yeah, but seven, that, he's not getting like 10 chances and getting three goals. He's getting yeah, four that, chances. He, Joel, that's he, what he I'm did, saying. He did, he did miss one today. <laughs> 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 Although, you think, but then there was the Forest game. Do you remember the the, the, the Forest yeah, game? Yeah, but that was yeah. that. That's fine because he's made up for it in yeah. all the other games now. Course, so it's course. all right if he doesn't score two in two games because he goes and scores a hat trick in two back to back games. Yeah. So, see, so, but what do you want? Do you want that? No, I don't want you, him to probably stop. want him to score in every game because then you got a chance no. of winning every game. Yes, more. It, it, you know, the, I, this is why I chucked in before about yeah. Harry Kane. If you look at Harry Kane, he hasn't scored a hat trick this season. So, you got scoring in Premier League at least in the same amount of games. But who would yeah. you rather have in your team? Well, well Harley, this, this guy is, yeah, he's hat trick. So, I mean, I think apart from Wolves, was it 3 0? Um, he scored three against United in a 6 3. So, without his goals, you don't win the game. Yeah. He scored one goal um, against Everton to get the draw. He scored one goal here. Yeah. This guy, I mean, the finishes today, he's saying, oh, give him the chances. We're talking about how good that first one outside of his foot, the second one. The second one was unbelievable. The second one again, changing yeah, his body. And the his third body one. Shape. Yeah. Talk us through the third, the, the third one, which was at the start of the second half. Well, there was a Maris pass through the legs, wasn't it, to Phil Foden? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Phil hits the post. <laughs> And he's and he's ready. <laughs> yeah, but that's what I mean. Like, how? And he's but ready. He's, he's not even like a debate. It's going he's, to he's, be. he's in the he's in the right place. But what was amazing was he, he had to change his foot slightly and then hit it 
for, I'm doing it, falling yeah. off the screen. It. Yeah. He's off balance, but it he hits like on that. target. Let's yeah. just say it didn't look like that, Gemma. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm so sorry, sorry. I look like me when I play that. <laughs> yeah. um, but the thing is, it was just like an instinctive. Everything no. sort of its whole body was slightly out of position, but in the right position to score the goal. I mean, Julian, you can tell your uh, your story about Sergio. Yeah, like I was intrigued in regards to how strikers or forwards score and then fall over. And I used to say to Sergio, why, why would you not stand your feet? And he's like, no, I'm putting my body in position where I put the ball where, it wanted, where I want it to go. So if it means me falling over and look enough balance, but the ball ends up in the back of the net, I'll take it. Ah. He said, so many times you see a striker have a wayward shot and they stand upright is because they're not prepared to put their body in the, in the position, position. you know what I mean? So it's yeah. just understanding that, but listen, like... And that was he, it. Yeah, that was, that's an example <laughs> of it, but initially he's made the right run. So if that does happen, he's in the right position. Yes. Like, he, it's very rare he makes the wrong decision positionally. Yes. He, he, he said, where should I make my run? Oh, the cross is coming from here. I need to get across the, the front to leave space at the back. He then should shoot across the goal. Yeah. Keeper spills it or hits the post, potentially it comes out. Because there's going to be times where that happens and it goes wide and you don't really notice that he's in the right position. <laughs> when he is and he goes to him, he scores. Well, that's it. I mean, and, and the power regenerated, I felt, I felt from that position, was unbelievable for the goal. But, Sean, it's not a coincidence, is it? You know, we keep saying, even if you think of the Leipzig goal, the, a couple of them, you know, maybe the odd game, but it's not a coincidence that he's always in the right position and when it falls to him, it ends up in the back of the net. You know, that, that is something that's obviously comes from him, work rate, intelligence, yeah. all those things. I, I, I believe that as well, and I think Jolien uh, made a valid point off air. That there was a, no, actually it was Jamer, where he was running and you said, shoot, shoot, shoot. But he plays it out wide, and his first instinct is, is to run into the box for the mm -hmm. tap-in. So he sets himself up for that position way ahead of time. He, like, he kind of feels like he premeditates where the ball's going to go or where he's expecting it to go. And once he's there, it's just a matter of getting his body in a position how he wants to take it. But I think with that Phil Folden cross there, I don't think he had that much time to have his body in that position. I just think he's just altered it and just adapted. And that's the thing. Yeah, and that's the natural instincts he has as a striker. It's, it's phenomenal. So that put it to 3-0, then 4-0. Uh, I mean, we nearly had another game where two, two hat-trick heroes. I mean, Julian Alvarez, and I think... Uh, that, we could probably talk about all the I thought he was brilliant, his work oh. ethic was brilliant, and, 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 and the, well, we was talk about his first goal was, was, was Julian all over, wasn't it? Great yeah, finish. again, like, his goals and his understanding, because he played what, as a false nine, wide left, then he went as a number nine, and he played them all immaculately and understood what the role entailed. He didn't confuse the position and he didn't look uncomfortable. He just was like, OK, now this is my role in the team for this next ten minutes. Yes. And then all of a sudden, he's getting through on goal, and yeah, his, his goal was ridiculous. Not only did he create space in a way for the Kevin to play the ball, and that was a great pass, but then his composure to yeah. adjust his position. Because they defended it ever so well to get back, to be fair, and I thought, great defending, and all of a sudden he's chopped it inside, and then defenders, yeah, he was lost a little bit, but and then the composure again to, to reverse the finish, and Shamo will give us a verdict on the goal. Yeah. <laughs> Should he have done better? <laughs> Six yards yeah, out and a free shot, J Mo. That yeah. doesn't happen. I felt for him because oh, his, no. his arms went up in the air and there was that freeze moment when you know the ball's already gone in. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> but you, you, I, I think um, I think Jolien has underplayed Kevin De Bruyne. No, yeah. no, no, you're going to. He whiz. Can it, it, we it, talk about that? He's picked the ball up and it's like pass. And it was like, no, I've got a better pass for you. Just watch this. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it, because cause it looks like he's thinking he's got to go round the defender, do it that way, but instead well, he goes the other side. The round yeah. of it would have been for Alvarez, and he's put it, like, for him in on goal. It's like, <laughs> this is going to be two, yeah. No, we're going to put it for you, and then all you got to do is... I feel like the defender made his choice up, because as soon as Alvarez pulls out, the defender looks and kind of goes two yards, and that's in Kevin's waiting time. Yeah. And as soon as he takes that second step, then the ball comes oh, from the place where he left, yeah. and then he's done off. We'll be seeing that for the, the pass for Phil Foden. Yeah, it's, yeah, similar. Yeah, yeah. it's like, I need to get tight, so you narrow that gap thinking you can't play it in that space. Mm -hmm. But he's not wanting that space, he's just he wanting any space, space. to <laughs> yeah. put it through for Alvarez, and yeah, was, the delay was outrageous. Mm. Kevin De Bruyne, back to his free-flowing best, as you know, we've seen now, that, that kind of people coming into form, Another man coming into form, Phil Foden, didn't get a goal, but I mean, was more or less involved in all six of them, really. Uh, and it was his assist for Cole Palmer, uh, for Cole Palmer's goal. 
Yeah, uh, what can you say about Phil Foden again? I mean, I, I think what I love about this City side, and you're talking about the, the improvement, like Alvarez, you mm -hmm. get two goals, but he was doing stuff that weren't getting him goals, which were equally as important in a yes. way. Um, and Phil Foden hasn't scored, even though he's tried and hit the post. Everything he was doing was like, this is more for the team mm -hmm. than it is about me getting the, the match ball, but Haaland's got that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he doesn't need any. I don't, think it's, yeah, I don't think it's an argument about that. But, but Phil, yeah, once again, I mean, and what I loved about Cole Palmer's finish as well, it was nonchalant. Yeah. You could say, oh, well, it's right, you're, you're winning the game comfortably and you've just come on a sub, but... That's the moment where I think players can go, oh, I Rush need it. to score yes. and then miss hit it. But he was just like, thanks very much, just go and celebrate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just, I, I did say to the guys, I said, this, <laughs> it's one horrible team to play against. Yeah. City. Well, I, was, yeah. I think I was, we were chatting about it here. From, from Vincent Company's point of view, I'm guessing, I mean, it's not, this isn't defining their season. They've already done that, really, with the, the standards he's been setting in the Championship. What, what do you, what, how would it go, do you think, with Burnley now? Is it just a, let's forget about that and move on? You can't do much about it. Yeah, I think it's done and dusted. I think we all said that City's probably one of the better, better teams or best teams in Europe at this moment and has been for, what, two or three years? Mm. So I think Burnley have now got to come away from here and just be like, all right, we've got a lesson in what not to do. Yeah. Not take chances. You can't play out the back against everybody, especially a team like City, because they press well as a unit, mm -hmm. as well as keep the ball. So if you give them that half a chance to get the ball, the chances are they, they will sniff it out and mm. cause problems from it. And I think in certain times of the game, I don't think Burnley respected that, especially the goalkeeper. He was taking a, a lot of chances and he wasn't playing it quick enough. Yes. And that's what City want you to do. Keep playing because they just close the gap until they know they can press. And, they got punished for it, but in general, like in the first half an hour, you wouldn't have seen this scoreline coming. We, all, I thought it would have been a little bit closer. Yeah. But the second half, they just Phil Foden started going inside, like Jamo was talking about, and that's that squeezed all their back four into the box, and then the ball started getting slipped down the channels wide, and that's when Jamo was like, "It's it's like a training yeah, <laughs> session," yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because they was just just slamming the ball across the box and just for tapping. So it will be a lesson, but knowing Vinny and Jolien will tell you and Jamie will tell you, he won't want that to happen again. He will do everything in his power not to let that happen again. Is, is, is this international break coming at a little bit of a, a wrong time, just given, you know, the, the, the momentum that City are building now and, you know, the, we're looking at the, the performances, all these players just slowly kind of coming into peak. Or do we think a break is good then to come back and compete on the three fronts that we're competing on? Both. I think yeah, there's, both. there's arguments for both scenarios. Um, do you want to have a potential break going into a Liverpool game? Yeah. Or do you want to, off the back of what their tough couple of performances and results, do you want to go into that game? But again, the confidence that this group of players has and the understanding we, we've seen in, in previous international breaks and and restart, it's, it's, it's just consistent. It's just like, it doesn't take long for them to get up to the level that we expect. Again, there's been periods in this season that hasn't happened, but at this moment in time, they're dominating games, which before they've had spells. I think yes. in the last three or four games, it's been 90 minutes and we look like we can control in every element of it. Yeah. I, I think breaks can be good. Mm -hmm. um, I've never worked under Pep, but every indication is that it can be hard work, mm -hmm. mentally, if yeah. not physically, yeah. and therefore you see the fruits of hard work, as in, you know, was it 13, 16 goals, whatever, 13, 12 goals, whatever, <laughs> uh, last couple of games. Well, you get a little break then. It's like, I don't mind going back again. Yeah. It, was, it was like being away with Capello. Oh. <laughs> well, ten, 10 days was enough headache yeah. to <laughs> get a result and then go back to a club. But when it became a World Cup or a, you know, a longer expel, all of a sudden it's gets too intense. Yes, yeah. And I think this break would be great for the team. They go, right, great, we're good, good form. We go off international, we'll do that. We'll come back. I'm looking forward to more good football. Yeah. Mm. So Especially you know what's good. at stake. Like yeah. you're saying, yeah, yeah. all what's coming now is semi-finals, Champions oh. League games, Premier mm. League running. It kind of, it feels like if to, to, if we want to, as we do want to win every trophy we're in for, we can't really lose a game when we come mm. back. If you want to, if you want to win the Champions League, you want to win the FA mm. Cup and, you know, try and close the gap on Arsenal, Really, there's no room. You might be able to draw a game in a Champions League, but I'm thinking, Sean, you can't, 
He's basically City have got to win every game until the end of the season now. And I think Pep said that in an interview a few months ago. He said he knows for our team we have to be at 100% nearly every game. And that's not just to compete with Arsenal for the title, but that's the same in the FA Cup and the Champions League. And if you want to be the best, that, that it's going to be hard yeah. mentally and physically, but that are standards you have to... Don't come yeah. to City if you don't want it. Yeah, yeah. that's what I mean. <laughs> that, 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 that are standards. And I think, I think City were more than capable of doing it. Yeah. Love that, okay. love that. Well, listen, as you know, Match Day Live is going to be with you every step of the way. So we've got a little break you can see next up. We welcome Liverpool to the Etihad Stadium. Cannot wait for that. I'll be joining you for that. That'll be an early kickoff on Saturday. And, uh, Jolien, uh, we, well, we're mentioning young Rico Lewis. He's yeah. got a call-up to the under-21s as well, which is great for him, and you'll be away doing that as well. Yeah, I'll be away him and Cole as well. So, Cole... Again, coming off the back of a goal, but yeah, Rico first call up for the 21, so Sorry, congratulations you to you him. You took your time on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Wow! Explain that, explain that. I'm joking. Bro, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> Chill. <laughs> Hasn't even a possibility. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I've, I've asked. At least the line up anyway. At least the line up for the semis. We want, we want to go to Wembley. There, yeah. Go and listen. We'll get it in now because today is an absolutely. We want to go to Wembley. Um, thank you so much oh, to Sean Wright, yeah, Phillips, Jolie and Lescott, and, and David James. Thank it's you. been brilliant. Uh, and thank you to all you for watching as well. Thanks to all the team behind the scenes. Enjoy the break, and we'll be back with you for that 12:30 kickoff against Liverpool. But until then, have a lovely weekend. Thanks for watching.